Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. How are y'all tonight? It is Monday night, the mundane Monday. Here in Georgia, we've had absolutely nothing but rain for, seems like forever. So, I've got my coffee made. I'm ready to chat with my friends. I'm using my computer as a screen again. I kind of like it. This new computer works pretty good. I had to get a new one. Um, I don't know what is wrong with me and laptops, but I just really go through them pretty fast. I wear them out pretty quick. Um, the, but now this one, the hinges and stuff are made a lot different on. And if you're in the, if you're in the, thinking about getting a new laptop i really love this one but it was kind of it's a pricey one though but anyway i really like it not because it's pricey it's an lg and i actually have had an lg phone for a long time and i just like the way the hinges and stuff are made on it i don't think it's going to die on me quick like most of the ones i've had before anyway me and may have both uh worn a laptop's hinges out so much that our screens it won't open and close good, and then it, it'll, it'll actually bust your screen. So, I was reading my comments on Real Southern Woman before I came in. Y'all, I had a really rough week last week. For the most part, with Chris being gone, um, I had a lot uh, on my plate and wound up sick because I'd taken that stupid vaccine. I hurt so bad on that vac vaccine it was ridiculous i really was afraid that i was going to get the shingles but i didn't uh, so i had the shingles vaccine <laughs> and it uh my arm hurt but and it was sore but the day i think it was thursday i hurt so bad y'all and i'm not kidding i'm not that big of a baby that it was like i didn't want to move my arm and it hurt all the way down my side. And then my back started hurting really bad all the way down the sides and down the bottom of my back. And then I, I felt like I was just in, I really felt like I had the flu and I had to go to bed. Y'all, I never just go to bed unless it's a fibromyalgia day. And y'all that have fibromyalgia know what I'm talking about. So it got me down. And I don't know if because the shingles, is a virus that does attack the nerve endings and since i have fibromyalgia it bothered my nerve endings i really don't know but i can tell you one thing it was rough but thank god it was only the roughest roughest day was one day the next day i was still pretty sick but nothing like the day before and then by the next day i got to get out with my sister and have a good time and y'all got to see her and I had lots of comments. I really enjoy reading your comments. I want y'all to know that I don't always answer the comments because it's just hard for me to do everything that I do. Um, we have comments on Colored Valley Cooks. We have comments on Colored Valley Cooks Group. We have comments on Real Southern Woman. And we have comments on YouTube, Real Southern Woman, and YouTube, Colored Valley Cooks. So, with that said, and that doesn't include all the other things that we have to do during the day. So um, I can't, I just can't get to everybody anymore. My sister started helping me. Thank goodness she is covering most of my comments on Colored Valley Cooks group. She's also helping me with Colored Valley Cooks. So if you have a question that is really important or you have a question that is not getting answered uh, for some reason, and you really need an answer, you need to instant message me through Facebook or send me an email at colledvalleycook at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you the way Facebook works. YouTube is easy. It just shows the comments in line, one right after the other, no matter what uh, video they're watching or anything, it just all falls into line. But on, on Facebook, if y'all comment, I mean, it could be, there, there's comments, no kidding, Melissa's helping me with it, 
but because so many people comment on so many different things on so many different videos the way Facebook works is you got to go into each individual video find the comment and then try to answer it it is it is time consuming so anyway with that said remember y'all just remember that I do sit and read your comments I really do I read them on every platform but I'm not the one that always responds and I'm not the one um, and I just don't have time to answer everybody so and I don't mind y'all sending me a personal message and I don't mind you sending me an email if it's something important or you really have a question that you want to know how to cook something or what you're doing wrong about something then send it to me what I'm loving about the color belly cooks group is I'm having a lot of people go on there and ask questions and all of my sweet viewers help me out and they direct everybody where they should be going and they tell them what I would normally say and it's like I have all these little helpers and I just love it love it I love the way Color Valley Cooks this group is finally coming together and becoming a group like a community group of people that really depend on each other and I really like that I do that's why I started it I didn't start it just for some other platform for me to have I ha I actually started it for y'all because the way Colored Valley Cooks page is y'all don't really get to put any input in you can't make you know a real post or anything like that and it, it gets a way of y'all actually being uh, friends with each other and saying look what I made this week and this is what I liked um, I had a lady send me a message tonight on YouTube telling me that she'd made my God said God send cake like four times how much they loved it but every time she tried to make cupcake cakes they fell flat I had the same thing happen with me with my red velvet when I made it for the Valentine video the cupcakes wanted to fall flat so I've actually reduced some of the liquid and some of the butter in both of those recipes those recipes are going in my color Valley cooks volume 3 cookbook and so they will be fixed before they go into a cookbook but just a heads up on those if you make either one of those recipes that's my red velvet with the cake mix or the godsend cake the cake mix I have reduced a little bit of the um, liquid so that you get a better final result product okay um, with that said I've been sitting in the living room talking to Chris my husband is home oh I've so enjoyed him being here today I've gotten a lot of work done he helps me so much and I love him very much and I'm so thankful for him I know I came on here the other day and I said that when he's not in the kitchen with me, I'm more comfortable. And I would be a liar if I didn't tell you the truth. And so this is what my platform is. It is me for real. I mean, that's the way I am anyway. Um, and so I say what I what I think. And I and I even if I love him and even if he's a sweetheart, it's still um easier for me to video. As far as comfortably when I'm alone in the kitchen um, I had a lady come on here and some of y'all seen it and um, but it was actually on YouTube and she said said a lot of ugly things um, because she kind of rolled with that one and a lot of y'all got on to her and made comments and um, and I didn't read all of them because it just the list just kept going on and on and I was thinking well I'm just getting rid of this woman she's saying ugly things she was saying that I only did this for the money and that I wasn't real and blah 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 and I was thinking she's just somebody that's you know somebody that's um, not happy on the inside and I blocked her from the channel and I know that that might not be the most Christian thing to do but if somebody's gonna get on a channel and just be ugly and not be nice I don't want it to get y'all all upset and the best thing that we can do for somebody like that is just don't give them the time of day don't fuss with them um, because that's what they want and I will delete them y'all if they say something that's inappropriate enough that I feel like they need to be deleted they'll be deleted and then I don't have to fool with them anymore um, I was reading in Deuteron 
Deuteronomy, that's what I say, um, tonight. And so I got, I got, I was reading and I, and I read it out to Chris and I said, Chris, this is what I'm thinking about this passage. What do you think? And he says, exactly. That's exactly what true, you know? And so I thought, well, good. That's what I'll talk to everybody about tonight. Um, when I do Bible study. I could talk and ramble forever. Can y'all tell that? My mama used to tell me that I could talk to a 10 foot, uh, no, she said I could talk to a blank wall and, and I would just, you know, I could just talk forever and she's right. But you know what? The wall's not blank. Y'all are on the other side of it. Um, this is coffee. This coffee is good. It's really strong. So I fill it full of, listen, to, this is what I have in my coffee. I have nutmeg in here. I have sweetened condensed milk in here. Yes. Eagle brand sweetened condensed milk in here. I have evaporated milk in here. And then I top it with whipping, um, cream out of the can you know the squirt kind and then I sprinkle it with nutmeg again and so this is my dessert y'all this is a latte that I make myself I guess that's what it's called I don't really know I'm not a coffee person I mean I'm not a coffee I'm not a coffee expert I like good coffee but I'm not a coffee expert so um this is my dessert I have one in the morning and I have one at night and that's just what I do So if y'all were in a hurry tonight, didn't do good to come on live, did it? So I'm glad y'all were all here. I hope I got a good crowd tonight that y'all were so good and listen to what I have to say tonight because it's going to be encouraging. It's going to be interesting. I think it's interesting to me and I would hope it would be interesting to you. And I hope you don't tune off because I start reading a little bit about what God says. Okay, because all I'm doing is reading it out of the Bible and it's his, it's his words, not mine. Um, and then y'all can decide whether or not you think what I'm saying, you know, matches up with it. Uh, but uh, I'm reading it by my husband first. What just happened? Oh, there it goes. Um, so it's, in De it's Deuteronomy. You know, if you look at how it's spelled, you can say it correctly. But I never, most of the time when I'm saying it, I'm not looking at how it's spelled, you know. Um, Y'all gonna have to wait a second on me. Okay. One thing I started noticing, and I'm going to flip through on this because then I'm looking at this and y'all don't feel so detached that if I'm just looking down here. Okay, um, so I was reading in Deuteronomy, and I came to a place, I started, I've been reading, you know, in this chapter for quite some time, and I came to a place where he started talking about making a safe place for people to go, and now, Deuteronomy is, is a book of the Bible where God is giving a lot of law to his people. He's given them, you know, do's and don'ts and how's and why's and uh, tells them what to eat, what not to, and what not to eat, what's clean, what's unclean. Um, he stresses to them over and over about how um, they are his people and they are to worship him and that's all. And and he talks a lot about what he's, what he's done for them, okay? And so um, I'm looking because I had flipped, because I was also looking at the word abomination, but Now I'm having to look. I always do this.
Yeah. Okay. It says, uh, for you're a holy people unto the Lord, and the Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Then he tells them that they shall not eat anything that is abominable, okay? And then, which means it's unclean and it's not right to eat it. Then he tells them exactly what they can eat. Um, and we keep going and going, and he lets them know that, um, what they're supposed to sacrifice and they're supposed to give of the first fruits of their labor, of their fields, of their food. Um, and then he also tells them that they are supposed to release people that are in debt to them after seven years. Um, and then you get to, this is it right here. And, and I just, after reading all of that, and then I got to this part. See, we've already dropped 20 people. It's just amazing to me. Um, but thank you for staying on here, the ones who are on here. And thank you for wanting to hear what I'm about to read to you because it's very, um, I think, shows how good our God is, how just he is, how loving he is, even in the Old Testament even when things were crazy and they were killing, you know, people to take the land over and things like that. But what you have to realize is God looks at us as a whole and he was looking at them as a whole people. Um, and he was doing what was right for his people. And he was also um, doing what was just. And this is what I like when I read this, it just really resonated with my soul. And I'm going to read it and see what you think. We're going to be reading in Deuteronomy 19 if you want to take a look. So if you have a Bible and you want to flip over there, then you can read it with me. Now I'm reading it out of the KJV tonight. And we are going to start uh, reading in verse 2. Okay, It says, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess. Thou shalt prepare thee away and divide the coasts of the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts, that every slayer may flee thither. So he's telling them that in all this land that they're going to possess, he wants them to have three cities that they make a way for the slayer to flee. Okay. And then he says, and this is the case of the slayer. So he gives the slayer a case. Like he has a side to his story. He has a reason behind why he's going to flee. And this is what is going, God is going to uh, make a way for him to be able to go somewhere. Now, this was really important to me because it shows you just how good and just just our God is. And so he doesn't, um, when he gives them all these laws and stuff, he makes sure that if somebody's guilty, they have to have three witnesses and they can't just have one witness and be put to death and that kind of thing. So he makes all of these provisions, in other words, so that his people can be justly um, live together and it be a law that is just. How's that? So he says, and this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee thither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he had hated not in times past. Um, as when a man goeth into the woods with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fletcheth a stroke with, with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the helve, and lighteth upon his neighbor that he die. He shall flee unto one of those cities and live. Listen to that. He shall flee into one of those cities and live. Least the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot. And overtake him because the way is long and slay him. Whereas he was not worthy of death, insomuch as he hated him not in times past. So not only is he providing a place for these 
people to flee okay he is providing three places for these people to flee so that when it is time for them to flee it doesn't take them so long to get there that whoever is hot in anger up against them would reach them first and kill them okay because he says he goes on to say least the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer um then he says wherefore i command thee saying thou shalt separate three cities for thee and the lord thy god enlarge thy coast that he has sworn unto thy fathers and give it to thee all the land which he promised to give unto your fathers and you shall keep these commandments to do them that innocent blood be not shed in your land in your land which the lord your god giveth to thee for an inheritance and so blood be upon thee so he's doing what's right and he wants the people to do what's right and you don't want a man who's angry to go kill somebody and somebody be dead and then figure out that it was an accident and then him feel guilty he wants to do the right thing god is a just a god okay he provided a way even for the slayer in the old testament to reach a place where he could live now why is that important because our god loves people because he get he gave he gives the slayer a second chance to live just like he gives us we're guilty of sin and we need a savior and now in this age of grace this is not old testament anymore he's provided a way for us to be able to live and that is through his son jesus christ and so when i read that all i could think about is how god has provided a way for us to live um and it's just incredible to me not only that but it reminded me how he gives us second chances you know he wasn't gonna let that guy mess up um in one shot he gives him another shot you know he gives us second chances and so i just really really enjoyed reading that tonight i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did i hope that you will pick up your bible and read um that chapter and think about all these things that god did for those people um and just a few chapters later he's telling them you know to take over the land and kill the men but the difference from there uh from in times past in the times past he told them to kill the men the women and the children and only keep their livestock but after all of these laws are laid down then he tells them once he go they go in there they are killed to kill the men but they can keep the women and children um why i'm not sure maybe since he gave them all those laws by then he thought the people could handle keeping the women and children and um as long as they followed his commandments okay they god knew that the men would never follow his commandments that were from those other countries um, and you know in those other territories so um i just i just like reading the old testament just as i read the new testament there's pictures of christ in there um i enjoy it and uh we don't just have to read the new testament you know and learn from it now i do know that we do not live back then but we are god gave us that for a reason and he gave us uh these uh books to learn from thank goodness so that we wouldn't make bad mistakes when we don't have to um and we can turn to him so i just um was excited about that tonight let me see what y'all are saying to me tonight Diane says to keep her in um, our prayers that she is in her final stages or she says last stage of heart failure and 
one of her kidneys is failing and that's a very serious thing diane and i'll just go ahead and say to you i pray and i hope that you know jesus as your personal savior and i hope that you are at peace with going home to god um so i'm gonna say that first because i know what it's like to think that i'm going to die and to me that's the number one thing that we need to be asking you that and making sure that you are at peace with it and that you are ready to go meet the maker you know um if you are then um i pray that god would give you peace and comfort um i am not one that believes in just praying that people are healed and i'm not trying to be ugly but god is in control of your heart he's in control of your kidneys he's in control of whatever's going on with you and i just pray his will for your life be done maybe he's ready for you to come home um and maybe he's not but i don't like uh, to pretend like the only answer to prayer is healing because it's not um there's lots of reasons why god does the things he does and he knows what's best for us and our family. So um, I do pray for you, Diane, and I hope that everybody on this uh, program will also pray. Um, let's see what else we got. Tanya says she's thinking about going on a diet, but this is why she don't diet. Why? Because I'm telling you what all I have in my coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna make some good peanut brittle tomorrow too. Um, a lot of people are saying they're gonna pray for you, Diane. Chestine says that my voice is not with the sound. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what's going on with air that. Um Okay, now Diane is saying that she's a widow and her children need prayer and um, she's alone and she feels very alone knowing that she's going to pass away soon. Um, and I am sorry for that, Diane. I really am. But I, I do pray that God would give you comfort. Like I said, um, I mean, and nobody knows what that would feel like unless they were the ones in that situation. And I will say that um, people in the world today, even our own children and even us, we're guilty of it. We say a lot, many of us will say we're going to pray and we don't even take the time out to pray, much less go see somebody or do something for somebody that if it really takes time out of our day and um, we're all guilty of it. And let me just say that uh, God is there for you. He loves you and he's got his arms wide open. And um, he's really the only one that um, I know you're going to miss your kids and I know you're worried about them. But all you can do is just pray and, and know that God's in control. And, um, and I'm sorry, you know, that they are busy. But I think that happens in a lot of families now um, because the way that the world is today, both the man and the woman work so much and we want so much and we just seem to be so busy we don't have time. Um, I mean, I don't know how to say anything else besides I don't have any good answers for that one. So we'll just pray for you. Um, And Kamisha says you could reach out to your local church. Church, If you um, have a local assembly that you belong to, of course you should reach out to them. Even if they've hurt your feelings, even if maybe you don't feel like they've done the right thing towards you, lay all that aside. Have a forgiving heart. Call them and tell them what you're going through. And, um, and I'm sure maybe that they would take the time out 
to come and comfort you. She says she is at peace and she has been saved for many years. Well, praise the Lord, Diane. That's all that matters, right? The When you do take your last breath and you close your eyes, then you're going to be with God. And that's a blessing. My mama, um, I wasn't with her the night she passed away. She passed away during the night. And um, a lot of people would probably feel guilty th for that, but I don't. I do not think I'm near as important as God Almighty. And you know what? When my mama passed away, she had her Savior. And that's all she needs is her Savior. People put so much emphasis on us here on this earth and our time here on the earth and, and our family and all that. When, when in reality... Um, it's our Savior that matters, you know, and that's who you're going to be with when you pass away. And I knew Mama's Savior would be there. And so I did not feel bad that I wasn't with her the night she passed away. I had been with her earlier that night and she was actually doing so great that day. I thought she was just going to do great. And I went home and then they called me the next morning and she had passed away and they had already cleaned her and got her ready. And so then I got to go and just be with her. But, um, and I know some of y'all probably think this is morbid or whatever, but unless you've lost somebody close to you, it's not morbid. Dying is not morbid. And, and when, when we're saved, it's just uh, another part of life. We just wake up in a different place. We go to sleep. We wake up somewhere else. We don't really die. I mean, God tells us that Christ, uh, he says, death, where is your sting? Um, we don't die when we're children of God and we're saved. So um, I'm excited. Diane says her church is closed. Okay. Well, maybe you should just tell your, your kids, just, you know, break down and just tell them how you feel. And maybe they will uh, listen. I mean, just tell them. Um, we're all going to pray for you, Diane. We're going to pray for your children, too. And we're going to pray that God's will would be done in a situation, whether it's to bring them to spend more time with you, uh, whether it's for you to go home, whether it's for you to live for many more years. We're just all going to pray for you tonight and pray um, that his will would be done. I am thankful for his word. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful that you are all here. Um, and I do love you. I do not do this just for fun. I do this because God um, saved me from cancer, and I feel like that um, I owe it to him. Um, I, I kind of can relate with Paul a little more from Paul um, because Paul said that we owe, you know, I can't recite his words exactly, but he let us know, Paul let us know that um, we do not belong to ourselves. We belong to Christ. And you don't realize how much you belong to Christ and how much he's done for you until you think that you're about to die. And when you come to that realization, then you realize what's important in life. And, and, and because God saved me 10 years ago, um, I just owe it to him to spread his gospel and to spread his word and to give him glory and lift him up and encourage others. And that's why I believe that um, not, I'm sure it's not the only reason he has me here, but I'm going to tell you, as long as he's got me here, I'm not going to be ashamed. That's for sure. So um, I think he could, Collar Valley Cooks is a good platform because it doesn't bring people in. Uh, but not many people want to hear about God. Not many people want to hear about the Word of God. And a lot, a lot, many, many people would want to hear about death. But I can tell you one thing. Um, our God made a way. And he gave us a safe place so that we wouldn't have to go through uh, death like we would have if Christ had never come. Um, so let's say our prayers tonight. Let's all keep Diane and her children in our prayers. I'm sure we have many here tonight. Jimmy Sue says my voice is off. It might be because I'm back here in the room. Uh, we have many here tonight that um, need, I'm sure, uh, have un, 
that you know prayers that they haven't talked about so we'll all just pray together and we will see you again the next time i'm on here i just never know for sure which night it's going to be dear heavenly father we thank you for today we thank you for your word we thank you for this safe haven these three cities that you provided those slayers with we thank you for the fact that you loved your people enough that you didn't want them to have blood on their hands and that you loved us enough to send your son to die on that cross and um, conquer death and we we praise you for that we pray for Diane and her family whatever your will in her situation that that would be done whether it's to bring her children closer to her or for them to spend more time with her or for her to come home to you um, whatever the reason be we pray that it would be your will that you would give her peace and comfort and um, we just love you and praise you in Christ's name we pray amen I hope y'all have a blessed night I'm sorry my voice is off I guess the next time I will um, plug in my computer and see if that helps, okay? Y'all have a wonderful night, and thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we're not afraid or ashamed to say we love God and Christ. Bye, y'all. Love ya.